Hello everyone. Today we're starting on a new section called the Expanding Universe. So in this section we'll be learning about some of the different models that we currently have for our universe. Uh, and in particular later on we'll be looking at uh, our best current theory of the universe's sort of beginnings and uh, future called the Big Bang Theory. So to start we'll be learning about the Expanding Universe. Here we'll be talking about our current understanding of the universe's size and age and how that came to be. So first of all, uh, I need to define a term called cosmology. So cosmology is a branch of science uh, that uh, tries to answer fundamental questions about our universe. So what sort of questions might these be, do you ask? Uh, well, we have how large is the universe? That's always a good question to ask. Uh, how did it form? How old is the universe, which is sort of connected with how it formed? And how will it change, which of course is one of the most important things that uh, science can tell us. So cosmologists uh, can't really perform experiments to test their predictions. I mean, if you're a chemist or if you're a uh, uh, particle physicist, then you can you know, conduct experiments in a laboratory to test whether your predictions are right. If you're a cosmologist, you can't really create a universe from scratch and see what happens with it. So the field of study is based entirely on observations of the universe and models of the universe. We can't really go in and change things ourselves. In some ways it's similar to metaphysics, theology and philosophy in these aspects because we can't really conduct an experiment to test our theories. We can just keep looking at the sky. So in 1905, this fellow here, Albert Einstein, you might have heard of him, uh, came up with a special theory of relativity. It's special because it's to do with a special case. So it stated that uh, observers moving relative to each other would measure different values for time, different values for length, and different values for momentum, or different values for mass in some interpretations. So the special theory was that it only works when people aren't speeding up or slowing down. They're moving at constant velocities. In 1915, 10 years later, Einstein published his general theory of relativity, and this worked for the general case. That meant that uh, whether or not people were speeding up or slowing down, uh, it was always able to apply. So this improvement to the special theory accounted for accelerating observers. And as we remember, accelerating means that the observer is speeding up or slowing down or changing direction. So in this theory, Einstein proposed that gravity which of course is the force that sucks us to the ground, uh, is a result of distortions in space-time, and those are caused by massive objects. So up to that point, everyone thought that gravity was just another field, like an electric field or a magnetic field. But Einstein uh, said with his theory of general relativity that it was in fact a sort of bend or a distortion in space-time, and we just sort of follow that curve down to the surface of the ground. Now, in the early 20th century, just about every scientist in the world believed that the universe was static. That is, that it was unchanging. It wasn't getting bigger, it wasn't getting smaller, it wasn't really changing that much in any significant way. Now, in 1919, Einstein decided to prove this. So he took his general theory and he decided to apply it to the observable universe because he figured that uh, his general theory of relativity should tell him uh, that the universe is standing still. But he was wrong. His general theory of relativity, in fact, showed him that the universe had to be getting bigger or smaller, and was not static, as he had first thought. So Einstein's general theory predicts that the universe should be either expanding, that is, getting bigger, or contracting, getting smaller. Now, the theory showed that space itself is what's getting bigger or smaller. So it's, it's not just the things inside the universe that are expanding, it's the empty spaces in the universe that are getting bigger or getting smaller, as the case may be. And because uh, particles of matter, like atoms and galaxies and so on, just happen to be in that space, they get pulled further apart and the universe sort of gets bigger in that uh, mechanism. So this result was very, very different to what Einstein expected because, of course, he believed in a static universe. He believed that his equations that he had discovered uh, would tell him that the universe was unchanging. But obviously that sort of didn't quite go the way he expected. 
So because he didn't like this result, he, uh, he decided to uh, do something a little questionable. So Einstein wanted to make his equations predict an unchanging universe, and so what he did is uh, he introduced a constant to his equations. He called it the cosmological constant. And it's just a sort of, uh, something sort of tacked onto the end of the equations, a fudge factor, if you will, that just sort of makes the equations come up with the right results. He didn't really have any uh, basis for it in reality. He just liked uh, the idea of a static universe and wanted his equations to predict that. And so decades later, he was in fact, uh, he in fact remarked that it was the greatest blunder of my life. And so he, he wasn't very proud in the end of sort of tacking that constant onto the end of the equation to make the results uh, fit what he wanted. So in 1922, a few years later, this fellow here, Alexander Friedman, uh, revisited the equations because he wanted to sort of investigate the possibilities, even if uh, he didn't know if there was a basis in reality or not. So he investigated the possibility of a universe that was expanding, getting bigger, or contracting, getting smaller. Uh, at the time, these ideas weren't really taken very seriously. I mean, it was an interesting theoretical exercise, but at that time it wasn't known that they had any basis in reality. So, Anyway, uh, Friedman proposed three different models, which are represented by these three lines on the graph. The first was the closed universe, uh, which is the one on the bottom. As you can see, it sort of goes up and then back down. The y-axis is, of course, roughly the size of the universe over time. Uh, the open universe, which is the top line, as you can see, it just keeps going up and up and up. And finally, the flat universe, which is the green line. And as you can see, it starts going up and it's sort of starting to flatten out as you go on. So each of these models made different predictions about uh, the universe's future. Obviously, this one goes down, this one goes up, but what does that all mean? Well, let's take a look. A closed universe... So remember, that's the yellow line that goes up and then back down. Uh, will eventually contract and annihilate in a big crunch. So we can see in this diagram here, there's our universe as it currently is. It'll keep expanding for a bit, stop, and then start getting smaller again and smaller and smaller, and eventually everything will just pull itself together with gravity and get destroyed. So that's called the big crunch theory. An open universe, on the other hand, uh, will keep expanding forever and ever and uh, eventually get so big uh, that... Pretty much all light and heat in the universe is so spread out that everything's all getting cold and dark. And so that's called the heat death of the universe because there's no heat left. It sounds like it might involve a lot of heat, but in fact it doesn't. It involves all the heat going away. So we can see in this diagram here, the universe just keeps expanding and expanding and getting colder and darker until eventually they're all uh, very separated. And of course the final theory is the flat universe. And a flat universe will continue to expand forever, but it will expand at a decreasing rate. So it starts small, then it gets bigger, then it gets a little bit bigger, then it gets a tiny weeny bit bigger, and it just sort of ends up being the same size in the end. So that's the flat universe, and that one's the closest that we have to a static universe, one that stays the same. So, uh, let's go on to some questions. Question one. What was the name of the scientific theory that first predicted that the universe was not static? We have a few options here. Let's go through them. Uh, was it A, the Big Bang Theory? We haven't really learned about the Big Bang Theory yet, but it's not the uh, theory that was used to predict that the universe wasn't static. Uh, if it was, who would have learned about it in this slideshow? The theory is in fact based on this uh, prediction that the universe isn't static. The cosmological principle. This is in fact the name of something real. It uh, means that the universe is the same in every direction we look. And it's, it also says that the position of the Earth isn't special, but it's not really the thing that tells us that uh, the universe isn't static. Uh, Einstein's special theory of relativity uh, is pretty close to the right answer, which I'm sure you've guessed by now. Uh, the special theory of relativity only, uh, only deals with objects whose velocity is unchanging. And that doesn't really affect gravity or acceleration at all. So that Einstein's general theory of relativity, due to its uh, predictions that it makes about gravity and the curvature of space-time, uh, this theory here is able to predict the current state of the universe and, of course, how the universe will be both began and ended. 
So we can see that D here is the correct answer. This is the thing that sort of uh, got the ball rolling on the idea that the universe was not static. Question two. Why did Einstein add a cosmological constant to his equations? Uh, well, that sort of depends on whether you can remember what the cosmological constant is. So let's go through the options. Uh, is it A, so that the equations were able to make predictions about the universe? Maybe the equations couldn't make predictions about the real world unless you added a cosmological constant. But in fact, this is, this is not the right answer. They were perfectly capable of making uh, predictions about the real world uh, without adding in a cosmological constant. Uh, so is it B then? The equations could handle the enormous distances evolved. Maybe it's some sort of scaling factor that uh, turns the big numbers into little numbers so that the equation can handle them. But if you know anything about mathematics, is that maths can handle sort of any, uh, any number at all, be it big or small. So a cosmological constant isn't really required for that. How about D, in order to make the units correct? Well, uh, as it turns out, if all the equations are completely right, then you don't really need to make the units correct because the units will come out correct on the other side already. So it's not D. Our final option then is C, so that the equations produce results that Einstein liked. And this doesn't really seem like a very scientific answer because, I mean, who changes their equations to change their results? But in fact, we can see that this was the correct answer. Uh, Einstein basically didn't like the idea of an expanding or a contracting universe, so he changed his equations so that they would predict an unchanging universe. And he did that by sticking a cosmological constant into them. Question three. Name at least one of the questions that cosmology seeks to answer about the universe. Well, I went through a couple right at the start. Let's see how many you can remember. So our answers we have here are, how did the universe form? How will the universe change? How old is the universe? Uh, and of course, how large is the universe? So this is one of the uh, few questions that I've asked where the answers are also questions. Question four, why did Einstein refer to the introduction of a cosmological constant uh, into his theory as a blunder? And this is a particularly interesting question because in the recent years of cosmology, uh, a lot of cosmologists have sort of come back to the idea of a cosmological constant and wondered if perhaps Einstein was right, after all. But of course the answer here is that Einstein didn't really have a basis for putting it in. So Einstein's theory predicted that the universe was expanding or contracting, as we know. And Einstein added the cosmological constant so that his equations predicted a static universe. As far as we can tell, that's the only reason that he put it in. So he had no reason to do this except that he didn't like the predictions of his equations. These days, when we uh, use our powerful telescopes and things to watch the expansion of the universe, we can observe that there might be a cosmological constant of some sort, but we have observations to base that on, rather than just a, a vague wanting it uh, to be a particular answer. Question five. Name and briefly outline Friedman's different models of the universe. Now, if you can recall properly, there are in fact three models that Friedman predicted. Let's go through them. First of all, there was the closed universe, which was, of course, on that graph, the yellow line that goes up and then down. So the closed universe will eventually start contracting, if it hasn't already, uh, getting smaller and hotter until all matter annihilates in a big crunch. And so that'll be at an infinitely small point. So that's the first one, the closed universe. There are two more. The open universe will continue expanding forever, getting colder and darker and bigger, uh, and eventually light and heat will all but disappear. So that's, of course, the heat death of the universe. And finally, a flat universe will expand at a decreasing rate, so getting bigger and bigger but doing it slower and slower, and asymptotically approach a static maximum size. And so it will sort of slow down and just about stop. Well, uh, that's the end of the questions. So in this uh, section, we've learned about the different uh, models of the universe, which, which, of course, we can see here. Uh, and we've learned about Einstein as cosmological constant and some other sort of predictions about the beginning and the fate of our universe.